here's the William and Mary High Boy that I've been working for a few weeks. Some of my previous blog posts show various SketchUp procedures in modeling this piece. In this video, I show the guts of the upper section piece by piece. It's a way, I suppose, of showing the engineering of a high boy's structure and joinery. SketchUp, therefore, becomes an educational tool by using layers and scenes. Here's stage one with a partially constructed lower section of the high boy. A couple weeks ago I showed how I made the thin pasted beading on the under scrolled edges of the front piece. Here's stage two where I've copied and flipped the missing parts, legs and side. I'll select all of the parts and look for a common connect point to ensure a precise position for the new parts. The side is dovetailed at the back and mortise and tenon in the front. Here's stage three where I introduce the molded top that screws down to the lower structure. I'll open this molding assembly so you can see the joinery at the miters. There are grooves in the miter for splined connections. Also, there is a pin and socket added for strength. This molding includes a rabbited edge in which the upper, upper structure will fit. The back rail is connected to the side rails with mortise and tenon joints. The easiest way to precisely position this piece is from the back using midpoints in SketchUp. In stage four, I'll start the top structure. Here is the side and the two bottom rails these are connected with dovetail joints. I'll find a common connection point with the move tool to bring the rails into the side. In 18th century furniture, it is typical to tie the sides with dovetails for a strong carcass. Then I'll select all three parts and with the move tool position them into the rabbit provided in the lower molding. In stage five, I introduce the molding around the base of the sides. This molding covers the dovetails and the wood screws, but also provides a beautiful molded trim as if in a classic Roman column. Pick that corner of the miter and attach it to the edge of the side and then drop down on the blue axis at the bottom corner and touch the touch the base face and it's it's now located in the rabbit.
In stage six, I introduced the drawer frames. I'll open the assembly for inspection of the joinery. Typical mortise and tenons here. There is also a V joint on the ends of the front rail that connect with beaded trim that I'll add later. The frame is is uh, then copied up to the next dado position for the next drawer. The drawers are start larger at the bottom and gradually decrease in height as it moves up through the upper case. So those two drawer frames are equivalent. There's another drawer frame that is unique up at the top because it handles a double drawer section, two, two drawers, and has a little V joint in the middle to accommodate a divider post. Now we are in stage eight with the addition of the beaded edge treatments, typical of William and Mary style furniture. First, I need to flip this beading component along the red axis, then precisely fit into the rabbit in the front edge of the side. Bring this down flush with the base. Then to connect the divider to that V joint. And then the horizontal trim at the top with a mitered joint at both ends. In stage nine, the divider and runners are introduced. Here I'm positioning the drawer divider that will be fastened with wood screws through the drawer frame. So this accommodates the two drawers up in the top section. And we need some drawer runners at the top. I'll position it up here just below the the top of the case and then copy that drawer runner to position it in this middle of the case to handle the other side, both drawers. Stage 10 brings in the dovetailed top piece and the cornice molding. These dovetail connections really provide a lot of strength and rigidity to the carcass structure. The sides and the top are one inch thick, so that's also for a very strong case. The cornice is best located from the rear of the structure. I'll bring it down and 
connect precisely there. Now it's obvious I'm missing the right side of the case. So we can copy copy that side. Well, I'll do that after the back. Here's stage 11 and we've got a back panel and this back panel is shiplapped pieces for expansion and contraction and there's rabbited edges all the way around for the fitting of that half inch thick back assembly. There we have it except let me copy the left side and flip it over to the right position. Keep on the red axis, right click, pick flip along red axis, and then locate a common point of connection. I'll pick this outer corner here, bring it in, connect it to that corner there. And that completes the upper structure. The drawers are missing. Quite a bit of veneering decoration. That's another time. By the way, this is a 1690s piece from Lester Margon's Construction of Furniture Treasures. I copied shapes from the scanned images. It requires two images at different scales as the drawing depicts more than one scale.